This is the H-Lab. This is a piece of equipment that's been designed to teach solar hot water. This one is a closed loop glycol model, although these are also available in a direct model. Uh, this appliance is a heliopack, and so this is a solar hot water uh, pumping station, essentially, with a built-in controller. The controller has Wi-Fi and a web server, and so this is also capable of doing data logging, and it can display information on an iPad. The goal of this device is to have it fit through any wheelchair accessible door, which means any legal classroom in the nation. So this is the width of a wheelchair accessible door. This has a 4x4 solar collector and a 30 gallon water reservoir. And so 4 feet by 4 feet equals 16 square feet. And at about a gallon and a half of hot water per day per square foot of collector, then this is about a 24 gallon solar hot water heating system. So that matches nicely the 30 gallon tank in here. So the first step in demonstrating charging closed loop glycol using the H-Lab is to angle the collector so that it matches uh, roughly uh, the latitude that we're, we're in. That's about 36 degrees. So uh, my helper will come move a, a pin that holds this at an angle. So can I get you to see this black pin right here? Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do is I'll lift it up and pull it out so I can lift it up and then put it back in so that it stops it at the proper angle. So what I'm going to do is pick up the weight of the collector. My helper will pull the pin. I will then lift the collector to the proper angle and he will put the pin back in to secure it. So at this point, the collector is now angled so that it's perpendicular to the sun's angle. So one of the advantages of this mechanism is that by locating additional holes in this tube, you can set any collector angle you'd like. Another advantage is that the hinge is located off center, meaning as you lift the collector, the weight shifts back over the wheels on this assembly. That way it's much less likely to tip over if the wind blows. So looking inside the H-Pack, if we remove the cover, which is also an insulator and an air duct. So the components in the H-Pack are a hot glycol inlet, a heat exchanger that transfers the energy from the hot glycol to the drinking water, a water pump, a glycol pump, a cold glycol outlet, this is a Grundfos digital sensor. It senses both flow and, and temperature. Uh, this is the Heliodyne controller, which has a built-in web server. This one is a wireless model. And basically, this is a pressure sensor, also made by Grundfos. This senses both pressure and temperature. And an isolation valve to prevent, to allow us to isolate the expansion tank that's located behind the H-Pack. And these are flexible stainless steel tubes that connect the system together. This allows us to very rapidly and easily remove this closed loop glycol module and substitute in its place a direct system like you might use in Hawaii. One of the advantages, one of the goals of the system was to use real equipment like a contractor would actually install in a residence. So this four foot by four foot collector is identical to the collector that you would buy uh, for a residential or a commercial project. And by that, it has a one inch header across the bottom. It has 11 risers that go to the top of the collector and then a one inch header across the top. So these collectors are designed to be mounted next to each other using this DOS O-ring fitting. And these collectors also normally are plumbed so that the cool glycol and water mixture coming in is on one corner. And then the hot glycol water mixture is coming out on the diagonally opposite corner at the top. And so this provides an even flow through the riser pipes to cool the collector evenly. That makes the system more efficient. This is a combo fitting. Uh, which basically gives you the ability to turn 90 degrees, connect all the piping together, gives us a position for a thermistor well, and in our case, a 10K thermistor, and also an isolation valve and an air vent, all in one brass fitting. 
And then normally a contractor would run three quarter inch copper pipe through the attic of a house. And then they would end up connecting the copper pipe, pipe to the HPAC, which is what we have here. So it's normal when you plumb a collector to come straight out of the roof into the collector. So you might come out of the roof and into the collector. In this case, we needed to run the piping past the hinge point on the H-Lab so that the hinge would be where our flex tube is located. So we're running a piece of three quarter inch pipe from the supply side on the collector up to the top, down against the frame. And then we have another stainless steel flex tube uh, which bends right at the hinge point on the collector mounting. That way it minimizes the length differential as the collector is raised and lowered. And then basically here we have a 30 gallon tank, a tempering valve, and the expansion tank that I mentioned earlier. And I've attached a four port manifold to the supply side of the tank in order to make it easily possible to supply water pressure from a hose and then from there supply water to the tempering valve, water to fill the glycol mixing reservoir, and water uh, for other purposes as we charge the system.